Yeah, question three. We want to find the general solution of the given system. So it's, it's already becoming a cliche now. We're going to do the same thing we have been doing. The first step, find A. Our A here is the coefficient matrix. So find the coefficient matrix. And from here, we know that that's the coefficient matrix. That is 1, negative 8, 1, negative 3. Now the next step is we want to find the eigen values of the coefficient matrix. So to find the eigen values, we said it amounts to solving the characteristic equation a minus lambda i equals zero. Now to solve this, that is a minus lambda i, that is just the determinant of deducting lambda from the diagonal element here, negative three minus lambda. We have negative eight, you have one here. Now this equals this equals zero. So when we find the determinant of this two square matrix, what we would obtain is lambda squared plus two lambda plus five equals zero. And when we solve this, we're gonna obtain lambda one and lambda two to be equal to negative one plus plus or minus two i. In other words, a lambda one equals negative one plus two i and our lambda t equals negative one minus two i. Now this is quite odd. We have a complex eigen value instead of all the real eigen values we've obtained. So this is a quite different question. Now how do you how do you handle such a question like this? Now like 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 I always explain what you do is you choose any of any of the, the eigen values that you got. So I'm going to actually explain the procedure. I don't want to go into the proof right now but Try to try to understand uh, the procedure in trying to derive a solution to the, the homogeneous system. Now, what you do is, since you, you, you obtain two agent values, now choose any of the agent values. But I usually, I usually advise you choose the agent value that has a positive sign in front of um, the imaginary the imaginary part of the agent value. So this one has a negative sign here, but this one has a positive sign. So just choose choose this one here just to avoid the uh, mistakes of a negative sign but any one you choose works well so we're going to go ahead and choosing the one that has this now after you've chosen that say i want to give you now i want to speak generally now generally assuming you've chosen your lambda i to be alpha plus plus i beta probably this was the agent value you chose the next thing is you find the corresponding agent vector that is defined k1 K1 is the corresponding the corresponding aging vector of of lambda one. So or you could just say two lambda one in that ways. So K1 is the when you found when you when you made lambda one this, you find the corresponding aging vector of that. And the next thing is you will let you could call it anything, but let B1 equals the real part of the um, the aging vector you obtained and then let b2 equals the imaginary part of the aging vector that you obtained now having done this when you've gotten b1 and b2 then the general solution the general solution that you, you should obtain should be of this form x equals c1 into e to the power alpha t times b1 cosine of beta t so this is beta not b now beta t minus b2 cosine of beta t now plus so i can close this plus c2 into e to the power alpha t times so instead of instead of starting with b1 now we're going to start with b2 now cosine of beta t now plus instead of negative sign here we have a plus sign here plus b1 now, this this should be sign I'm sorry of that this is sign this is sign plus b1 sign of of beta of beta t so this is how the general solution should look like so i'm going to go ahead and make this my lambda one and from there i'll find a corresponding aging vector so we said so the next step is we want to find the corresponding aging vector. That is, we want to solve solve a minus lambda i x 
equals equals zero. So that is what we want to solve. So we are solving this equation here for for lambda one equals. So we have chosen a lambda one to be negative one plus two i. So for lambda one equals negative one. Negative one plus two i. So for this, our a minus lambda i times x equals. So we're going to replace lambda in this equation here. Anyway, we see lambda replace with minus one plus two i, and then the matrix that we obtain is going to be two minus two i, negative eight, then one, then minus two minus 2i times xy equals 0, 0. This is exactly um, exactly what we obtain. Now the next thing we do is we reduce like we have been doing to find the agent vector of, we're going to reduce them. Um, we will reduce this quotient matrix here. By the time we reduce the quotient matrix what we obtain is 1. We have 0 here. We have negative 2 negative 2i we have 0 times x, y equals equals 0. This is what we have. And then we write this in, um, in equation format. So this is going to be 1 times x, that is x. Then this times this, that is plus negative 2, negative 2i times y equals equals 0. Now what you observe here is the free variable we have here is, is, is y. So y is the free is a free variable. So since y is a free variable, we we'll set y, we we'll set y to be one. So when y is one, our x is just going to be two, two plus two i. So we've been able to find k one, k one which is going to be x, which is two plus two i, and y which is y which is one. So the next thing you're going to do here is you would factorize. Um, K1. In other words, what I, what I meant there is since our K1 equals 2 plus 2i1, so we want to write K1 in a way that we would see distinctly the real part of K1 and then the imaginary part of K1. This can be written as this is 2 plus 2i, they have 1 plus 0i. This is as 2 1, that is 2 1. Plus you have two zero, two zero, and then you have you have i. So that that's that's what you obtain for for your k one. Now, having gotten this, we said we said let let b one. That was what it says. Let b one be the real part of k one and b to be the imaginary part of k one. So that's step. I guess that should be step four. So B1 is the real part. The real part of K1 is the one that does not have any I attached to it, which is this one here. So that's going to be 2, 1. And then B2, which is the imaginary part, is the quotient of the imaginary number itself. That's 2, 2, 0. So having gotten this, then we have our final solution, which is X. That's the final solution of, um, of the problem. That is, um, I guess, we have not made any mistake here. Yeah, we're on track. So that's going to be x equals c1 e to the power of negative t. Then we open another bracket here. So our b1, which is 2, 1, we said cosine of 2t minus 2, 0 sine of 2t so we should recall that we, we, we are using the same formula that we have here so we are using the same formula that we have here then plus c2 e to the power alpha now the way I got my alpha probably maybe so we do not confuse things here so we said our lambda 1 equals alpha plus i beta alpha plus i beta and when you compare this to this this is going to be our alpha all this would be our beta. So that's what all I just did was just substitution of all these our values into this general form here. That's all I'm doing below here. Then plus 
plus c2 all into e to the power negative t into 2 0 so this time around 2 0 starts then cosine of 2t then instead of negative sign we write plus sign then 2 1 sine sine of 2t so this is the general solution of of the homogeneous system that was post that was post that book that's the general solution